Barry, it's very controversial, the distinction between human animals and other animals, particularly mammals. Uh, what can we say about the, uh, uh, the nature of language, which many people talk about as a key differentiator? Yes, I mean, I think if we're looking for differences between ourselves and our evolutionary cousins, language really stands out. Here's something that all human infants in normal development acquire by the age of 20 months, two years, uh, without explicit training. Nonetheless, something happens that organizes these words into meaningful structured sentences, and they share a structure across all human uh, countries. I mean, it's very interesting. If you ask what the children have in common, it's not the levels of intelligence, it's not the culture, it's not the, the training and background, the exposure to others. And yet they all develop something with roughly the same structure to it, the syntactic structure of language. Now that structure is only available to humans, and therefore there seems to be something distinctively different about the brains of humans that endows us with this capacity, an innate capacity perhaps for language. Now, what does language do for us if this is something that is species specific and that, that marks us out as different from other animals? What does it do for us? Well, I think it organizes the uh, contents of the mind in a way that is dimension shifted from other animals. Instead of just being focused on immediate perceptual experience, my encounters <clears throat> with things in the environment, there's a way in which I can uh, refer to and talk about things that are not here and happen at other times, and also a way in which language becomes an interface between minds. Just by using these words, um, I get straight through to the mind of another. I get into your mind to affect you, to amuse you, to upset you, to annoy you. I mean, language is very powerful. We use it at our peril. So um, that way in which we seem to have an immediate access to other people's thinking because we put our minds into our words, we literally voice our thoughts, that's something that I think uh, gives us a cooperation one with another that allows us to recognize that others have minds and thoughts like ours, which may not be available in the same way in the animal kingdom. So I think language is providing us with knowledge of the mind of others and knowledge of our own minds, because I'm using the very same vocabulary to describe what's going on in you and what you're thinking, as I would use to describe my own thoughts and my own experiences. So this becomes a common currency across minds. And this, this is probably uh, a way in which language is being used to unite minds into uh, societies and into cultures. So it cre language then creates culture, and it also creates the capacity to think over time, to plan, to recognize that what's happening in the present can be, is not just the only thing, that I have to have some communication, not just... Uh, at different places, things that we can talk about that are not here physically, but that are not here at the same time. Yes, we, so, can, we can talk about the past and we can and draw about the future. And the future, and we can draw generalizations from the past and we can plan long term uh, developments in the future. But I think that's true. Language makes possible culture. Many other things have to be there as well. Notice that um, I'm saying language. Uh, makes it possible to know our own minds and know the minds of others and to, to make uh, wider societies and cultures possible. But of course, it's not sufficient. It's a necessary condition, mm -hmm. I think, because we know in the case of high-functioning uh, subjects on the autistic spectrum, Asperger's syndrome uh, subjects, great fluency with language, great dexterity with language. But of course, they have problems in understanding the minds of others and they have social problems in not being able to read other minds and read other people's behavior. So I think having language is necessary but not sufficient to provide that integrated mm. society. What about the controversies about uh, whether animals do have language? Uh, the, the, many scientists do say that animals do have a certain kind of language which is very similar to our own. Others say that that's not the case. Well, I think that's because we're using the word language in a common sense in a rather loose way. I mean, look, we even talk about body language, <laughs> you know, so, so, so notice how, how, how extendable the term is until we do the science. But if you're going to do the science of language, you need to say, well, 
what are we talking about when we talk about language? And here you have to look at the work of generative grammarians like Noam Chomsky, who's going to say, look, there's a kind of hierarchical sequence and structuring that seems to be present in our form of communication and our form of expression that's not there in other animal signaling systems. Now, other animals definitely have signaling systems and they have uh, a lot of sequence. Birdsong has sequence. It has repetitive structures, really rather complex ones. They can invert them, they can, they can continue them, they can develop them, but they do not have this ability we have to have both hierarchical organization where one part of the sentence mm -hmm. depends crucially on another and allows us to see dependencies between actors and, and people acted upon relations between parts of the, the sentence are showing you relations uh, between the actors in the world. And the other thing we have, uh, very controversially again, is that we have recursion. That is, uh, we can take a, a sentence and embed it within another sentence, and then we can do that iteratively. And in fact, children do this very early on. One man went to mow, went to mow a meadow, goes to the nursery round. One man and his dog went to mm. mow a meadow. One man and his dog and a man called Fred went to mm. and, and children very quickly catch on to the idea this is indefinitely extendable. Similarly, I can say uh, Robert thinks that Jane uh, is, is uh, in Tower Bridge. But I can say, I wonder whether Robert thinks Jane is in Tower Bridge. Jane knows that I wonder whether Robert thinks, and so on. So just by using these same words and permuting the, the wondering, thinking, believing, each of those sentences embedding others produces a new thought. And in fact, there are indefinitely many of them. So you and I have an infinite generative capacity. Just by using this system, we can generate up to infinitely many, indefinitely many new thoughts. And what is it about the human brain, which is structurally similar to animal brains, uh, dolphins or uh, you know, chimpanzees, um, bigger, and but although not bigger than whales or dolphin brains, what is it about the human brain that, that can uh, uh, give it that capacity? Well, I think it's definitely the, the, the importance of syntax, of grammar, of structure. So there are many different parts of the, of the communication and signaling systems that we have in common with uh, other animals. I mean, look, you mustn't think of language as communication. Communication is much, much wider sure. because uh, there's all sorts of communication, including nonverbal communication. I can wave at you, I can wink at you. These are all nonverbal. But, but when I'm using structured parts of a grammatical sentence to put words in space, special relations of dependence with one another. That is what a certain part of the brain, often located on in the left hemisphere, that's what that part of the brain does. And of course, we begin to see that part as active, even in very, very young infants. So in fact, children learning language, maybe at the age of one before they're able to speak, but when they're listening to speech, you find that there's an activity that's happening in a very specific part of the, 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 the left uh, hemisphere of the brain that's not available to other animals. Now that means that we can produce indefinitely many new thoughts. In fact, unless you live a very sadly boring life, you'll hear many sentences each day and you'll read many sentences you've never heard before. And, and here's the interesting thing, they're just as easy to understand as those that are utterly mm -hmm. familiar. Mm -hmm.